Welcome. Thank you for joining us. My name is Sean Moss with Down Payment Resource. Uh, I also have Veronica Candlewall with us and Fern White is going to be in the background answering questions. I'm going to introduce uh, Veronica in just a moment, but we're here today because we hear all the time from lenders that they are still managing their approved DPA programs in spreadsheets and struggling mightily to keep up with those programs with guideline changes, program changes, funding status, and more. So today we wanted to have a quick but candid conversation about ways to manage DPAs better. We're gonna look for ways to cut down time spent on manual tasks in particular and get back to revenue producing activities. A little bit about down payment resource. We are a national database of all of the home buyer programs across the country. We were launched in 2008 to solve a problem that drives us crazy, drove us crazy as practitioners and probably drives many of you crazy. And that's that there was no easy way to track and find and monitor down payment assistance programs. So we track all of those programs around the country from every housing finance agency, city, uh, county, nonprofit, CDFI, and so forth that offers some form of home buyer assistance. And we update those programs on a monthly basis and as change occurs so that you don't have to and so that we can all look for other ways to improve our processes and get back to bottom line revenue producing activities. Now with that, I wanna introduce Veronica Candlewall. Uh, she is our Director of Operations and she's been with us for a while now. Veronica, you wanna give us a little background? Sure, so my name again is Veronica Candlewall. I'm the Director of HFA Relations at DPR. I've been with them for about eight months now, a little over eight months. Um, previously, I spent five years in mortgage products development with a national bank where I was responsible for development, maintaining um, all affordable lending products and programs. So um, DPA being the one of those, um, I had to make sure that we were up to date, um, that we were meeting the requirements and that we I did approve them based on bank um, requirements too. So. And so today we want to leverage Veronica's experience and the things we've learned at Down Payment Resource and just talk about ways to manage DPAs better. Um, and, and again, I'm Sean Moss, Director of Operations. Um, myself, Veronica, and the rest of our team, we're the ones tracking and monitoring all of these programs around the country. So uh, with that, we're going to kind of dive in here. We kept this to a 30-minute webinar because we want to be mindful of your time, but we also want to start tackling some issues that uh, maybe we'll have future webinars to expound upon. But we're actually going to hop off video here. And we're just gonna focus on the content here and get all this out to you. So um, let's first talk about some of the common headaches that we all have to deal with in product development, product management, and to kind of set some context going forward here. So what are we trying to smooth out? Where can we find opportunities for improvement potential? Um, Veronica, can you walk us through some of these, these challenges and obstacles that we all face in product development? Yeah, absolutely. So um, one of the things we continue to hear, and um, I know I've experienced it as well, is uh, maintaining a manual spreadsheet um, that quickly becomes outdated. Um, links break all the time. Programs change all the time. Um, for example, when income limits or purchase price limit changes, sometimes those link change with it. And um, depending on how many DPA programs that you, you have or want to have, um, that can quickly become a full-time job, just trying to maintain um, that spreadsheet. Um, also, treasure hunts and rabbit holes, you're trying to find um, the proper links to these programs and the information for these programs. Um, and it quickly becomes uh, a time, it takes a lot of time to try and find the program information that you're looking for. Um, sometimes you have so many web links that you've got to access, you start to wonder, are you still in the right program? And then sometimes it's very hard to find information at all. And now you have to pick up the phone, send an email to the admin, and maybe get into a phone tag or um, wait for a response, which again, takes time. It, it's not a quick, a quick turn time there. Um, also, you start fielding calls because when you have a manual spreadsheet that quickly expires or um, quickly is out to date, people start um, not relying on that, that tool. So they all reach out to the subject matter expert directly. And if they're comfortable with product development, that's who they're going to be reaching out to. And that could be sales wanting to know, is the program approved? 
Um, if the, you can approve a program because they just heard about one. It could be underwriting, processing, so on and so forth. And it all quickly adds up. Yeah, and so we did some research recently, and for those in our audience, among your peers, our, our, peer, our audience today is, is mostly secondary cap markets, um, product development. We did some research recently, uh, maybe some of you participated even, and we found that when you look at the people involved in finding, contacting, and collecting information about a program to then review it, that took an average of about 10 to 12 hours. Now, that's not all just one person. Some of you get sales involved. Um, some of you split it across the team and it doesn't all happen in a contiguous manner either, right? There's stops and starts, the phone tag scenario, but we found that on average, it took about 10 to 12 hours per program to find contact, collect info about, and then ultimately review once you had everything. So uh, Veronica, tell a little bit, tell us a little bit more about this. This isn't even just the, the, this is just the upfront work. Actually, this doesn't even include everything it takes to onboard a program. That's right. Um, again, there's a lot of hours that go in the upfront with the manual process. And then if it's a, a program you can approve, dependent on that program, you can now have to involve IT if there's configuration involved, um, your um, sales staff, if there's training involved, now you have to uh, produce and create product guides or program guides and training materials. There's a lot of work that goes into just one program. Um, and sometimes it's a lot of work for very little usage. So it's there's a lot more time involved than just this upfront work. Yeah, so for our audience, we're gonna come back to this 10 to 12 hours, but we're looking at little, little processes, little opportunities to cut away at the time it takes to manage DPAs. And there are a lot of different ways that we touch a DPA, a lot of different people touch a DPA. But as we start to dig into down payment resource and really kind of uh, try to refine this process, this is a start today, is a start for us to kind of roll out some of these specific areas where we can chip away at, at hours and turn it into minutes and things like that. Um, Veronica, let's talk about two very specific scenarios that we hear about all the time. I'm sure these sound familiar to everybody in our audience today. But more importantly, let's let's talk about them and think about them in terms of are they preventable? So Veronica, walk us through this. Uh, the, the, is this approved scenario? Yeah, um, I'm sure you're right. And there's people right now shaking their heads or nodding their heads. And I really wish I could see that. But um, the very first one we'll go through is, is this approved? Again, a, a loan officer needs to know or wants to know if a down payment assistance approved because one, they either have an app with a borrower that has a DPA involved already, or they want to get into the community and maybe start utilizing a DPA. Um, so what do they do? They're bypassing that a manual spreadsheet because they don't maybe um, rely on it anymore because it's not always up to date and accurate or as accurate as you would like it to be, um, as fast as you would like it to be. So they call on your product team um, who they know is the subject, subject matter expert and who's going to be ultimately approving them. So they rely on them to say, yes, it's approved or can it be approved in a, in a fast manner and with a manual process, there's nothing unfortunately quick or fast about it. And you may not be able to give them the answer or have a meaningful conversation on the spot like you would like to. So you've got two well-paid employees and 20 minutes gone and probably no end result on that phone call or in that response. And how about the second scenario, probably everybody's favorite here, the rush review. There's a loan app, there's a brand new DPA. Surprise, we've never seen it. Yeah, this is the fire drill. Um, this is fun. <laughs> Not really, but and unfortunately, you have a, a borrower that is being impacted here. So you need to try and move as fast as possible. Um, this is the scenario of the loan app has started and there's a DPA included and it's not on the approved list, but Unfortunately, it's not caught until the underwriter gets the loan. And when the underwriter needs to make a, an underwriting decision and they see this DPA, they start researching, is this an approved program? What are the specifics for? And if it's not an approved program, this may stop the pipeline. This may stop their, their review on the spot and may stop that loan from moving forward. And no one wants a stopped pop pipeline or a loan not moving forward, um, which does impact the bottom line. Right. So everyone is scrambling to approve it if it's possible to approve. And sometimes that's not always able to be done, which is unfortunate. 
So let's talk about winning your time back. Um, you mentioned we're talking about well-paid employees here. So originators that should be chasing new business and originating product teams that we hope are working more on purchase strategy, product strategy, than on uh, incremental delays and obstacles and disruptions like this and manual tasks that can be automated. So um, Veronica, how can product teams smooth out some of these processes? And guys, I know we're kind of glossing over this, but we wanted to keep this short today and just at least dive in and start having these candid conversations. But Veronica, how can product teams smooth out some of these processes and get folks back to their revenue producing activities? Um, by leveraging tools that are already available that have a centralized standardized platform and with all of the information already gathered, all the information is there that everyone would need, um, whether it's product development, um, to know what the requirements are, to underwriting, to know which way they need to underwrite to as far as income goes. There, our DPA directory has all of that information already gathered and you don't have to do treasure hunts. All the links are already there. There's no rabbit holes to go down to. It's already labeled. All the information's already available to you. Um, loan officers can stop having to gather information. They can keep selling. They can keep originating. They're not getting, you know, sample documents for these DPAs if it's a subordinate financing. So you're not, they're not having to gather that information. They're not having to fill out checklists. They're only selling, which they should be doing. Um, you can also get your time back by expediting a program onboarding by utilizing this tool. Um, because again, you can do a quick review and make a quick determination whether it's something that you can say maybe to right now because you're just scanning through the information real quick to find specific information like disclosures. Um, I can tell you from my experience, if it's something the agency is going to fund and the agency provides the disclosures for, then maybe it's something I can say yes to or if it's something that um, needs configuration in your LOS system or in an LOS system, it may, it's a maybe and you need to continue to, to research, but that information is all right there for you. Um, and to keep the pipeline moving faster by utilizing this tool, um, it, it, it helps support the underwriters um, by having a quick glance of quick no knowledge as to, and MLOs, as far as what programs are approved because they're gonna be able to quickly see those programs. You no longer have a manual spreadsheet and they're gonna know if it's program is approved or not for your company. Yeah, we did, so among some of the, the data points we got from some, some of this research we did recently where we were kind of looking at you know, the onboarding cycle. What are the, the events, the milestones, the, the tasks that are being completed and then the origination of the loan manufacture process, part of that research, again, among your peers for our audience today, uh, largely product management folks, uh, we found that on average, about two to three extra hours were spent by typically loan officers and under underwriters reviewing, digging up and finding, and then reviewing DPA guidelines, getting familiar with the DPA, perhaps hadn't seen it in a while, or it's changed since they last underwrote or originated it. Uh, so we found an average of two to three extra hours per loan app. So the 10 to 12 hours we looked at earlier, that was per program. Two to three hours additional time by LOs and underwriters, getting everything set up, moving it through the pipeline, reviewing, making sure they know what they're doing, and trying to find all the information or contact the people internally that they're going to need the support of to do so. So when we think about that, um, setting up loan apps and getting them underwriting, getting them through underwriting, uh, Veronica, thoughts on how we can shave off some of that time? Yeah, I, it's the same thing. Um, by having and leveraging the data all in one location, it's going to take your review time from hours to minutes per program. And who doesn't want to save time? And who doesn't want to save money because of how much time it can take to onboard these programs? So let's let's sort of change gears here for a moment. And... Before we show everybody the DPA directory, or for those that maybe haven't seen it in a while, the evolution of our DPA directory and what it looks like today. And before we show you our newest tool, which is the underwriter portal, which is literally in testing about to be rolled out right now 
uh, you know, in the next week or so. Um, Veronica, time is money and so is lost revenue. So let's again, be candid for a moment and identify the financial impact of some of these process inefficiencies and the missed opportunities that they, that they lead to. Yeah, so um, I, I think I jumped ahead and when I just said the expense of onboard, onboarding efforts where um, you're reducing the hours to minutes, um, which all of this does have a financial impact in one way or another when you take a manual process, um, it, it, you've got a lot of time invested in a manual process. So to eliminate that manual process and shaving off the hours to minutes by utilizing a centralized one tool that has all of that centralized information and in one format, um, which we'll talk about again or show you again later, it, it's, it's huge. Um, it eliminates disconnections between the program and maybe corporate overlays. There is a way to identify quickly in these programs if a program um, has any overlays that you need to put in place, like a different FICO, if it can only go Freddie versus Fannie, if for the FHA financing, if that program can go towards the minimum required investment or if it can only go towards closing costs. There's so many scenarios um, involved here and eliminate you can eliminate those missed opportunities. Um, Preventable cost of keeping up with programs once onboarded is you can eliminate that additional cost and, and focus on, um, so product can focus on maybe the higher priority projects versus having to spend time on manually updating a spreadsheet or keeping up to date with all of the changes needed in uh, guides or matrices. Also um, provides clarity, um, loan officers and underwriters, I've, I've mentioned before, they're gonna quickly know what programs have been approved by your company. They're gonna know if it's something they can offer. And they're also going to be aware, like the underwriter, for example, will quickly be aware of that program um, by doing a search and maybe saving a loan. Um, how many times has something had to be declined because they don't have enough cash to close. Well, if there's a program that they're aware of that they can utilize for that, you've saved a loan. Um, missed opportunities. So again, when the LO is aware of uh, programs that have been approved and that they um, are out there and available, uh, they can go sell towards that. And also by having the knowledge of those programs, underwriters, MLOs know what they need to do. They know the program information, which can salvage maybe missed or um, let's say you, you can eliminate errors. So therefore you're recouping and not losing um, grant funds. For example, if you have to fund up front and get reimbursed on the back end, that helps eliminate those errors to where you get your full refund and not lose lose, lose revenue there. Yeah, and speaking of revenues, you know, getting people to the closing table, that's an important part of it. And so let's take a look at um, one sort of missed opportunity perspective here. When we think about loan pipeline pull through, uh, another uh, sort of research project we've endeavored on here at Down Payment Resource in the, over the last couple of years is to analyze thousands of declined loan apps from banks and lenders and other partners all over the country, various markets, market sizes and conditions. Uh, but we consistently find that about 33% of declined loans were eligible for down payment assistance at the time they were declined. And quite frankly, that's just looking at loans declined for cash to close and debt to income. So of all declined loans, 33% of them are salvageable and, and largely they're declined for cash to close or debt to income ratios, um, DPAs can help with that. But we have to have awareness. On average, in that same study, the DPAs available to those loan applicants at the time amounted to a 6% LTV reduction. These are salvageable loan apps and enormous sunk cost. Think of all the cost it takes to get a loan all the way to an underwriter just to decline it and never accrue revenue. So. Veronica, if we can help save even just some meaningful portion of those 33% of declined loans, what impact can that have on the product team? So coming from product development, I, I can be honest here, uh, product development is a cost center. It's not a revenue producing team, right? So 
one way that product teams can directly impact revenue is by making it clear which products are available. So it's easy for LOs and underwriters to recognize opportunities and to save decline loans. Um, that's a direct contribution to the bottom line by the product team. Yeah, and who, you know, that's what I tell my operations team all the time is we got to find ways to contribute to the bottom line. Uh, being a cost center, that gets difficult, but we have to get creative and we have to be um, thoughtful about that. So let's look at a solution here for a moment. Let's look at two, actually. So we're going to hop out and show you the DPA directory first. If you haven't seen it in a while, you'll see the evolution of this tool. But I want to first walk you through kind of the, the four pillars of this tool. The first is you can find any program in the country any number of ways. We track and monitor all the DPAs, all the MCCs, all the bond programs and so forth. You can filter geographically. So if you wanna find programs in Arizona, flip to Arizona. If you want just as easily as we did that, if you wanna look in California, flip to California. Uh, if you wanna drill down more locally for expansion reasons, or if you wanna help a local market or local branch figure out where there might be some product opportunities for them, then you can filter geographically. If somebody comes to you and says, hey, I heard about this one program, do a keyword search and you can just go directly to that program. You can filter based on whether or not you participate. So you can, you can look at lists of programs that you don't yet participate in or hadn't seen before. Uh, you can report on the programs you do participate in. And I won't go through all of these, but you've got a number of other filters to find programs by provider type, program type, funding status, uh, funding source, repayment features, disclosure requirements, borrower eligibility requirements, targeted audiences, uh, property eligibility characteristics. Those are all just different ways to find a program, right? Or to find a set of programs based on any number of use cases or strategic initiatives or goals for the week or month or quarter. Then you can also manage your roster of approved programs here. So you'll see on the far right, this, this checkbox here, some programs are checked off, some are not. That is the way in which you can manage your roster of approved programs and identify those that are reviewed and approved and that you've chosen to participate in, which then of course, as you'll see in a moment, uh, that filters downstream to other users like underwriters in their portal. But let's open this up and look at it. So you can track your program IDs here. That can, that can propagate to underwriters as well, loan officers as well. Uh, what about overlays? We have this overlays feature here where you can communicate uh, your own information, your company specific information. And so Veronica, maybe give us an example or two of some things that you might include in this overlays section. Yeah, for me um, in product development, one of the things I was always looking to was completing the checklist, right, for Fannie and Freddie, and do they meet the affordable or community second um, definitions. So if a program maybe fits one of the definitions but doesn't the other, you can make that note here that it can only go towards your F Fannie Mae financing. Uh, you can put here in regards to FHA. Um, I think I maybe mentioned this earlier, F FHA, maybe it can go towards the minimum required investment. Maybe it can only go towards closing costs. Um, or is the nonprofit part of the FHA approved list? I mean, there's so many things you can place here to make the underwriters and LOs quickly know in regards to your approval of that program. And so in that manner, you can approve and provide context for programs. Now, those are two of the pillars, right? Filter and find programs, manage your roster of approved programs, including overlays. You can also report from this tool. You can export data. Any data point in our system can be exported if you want to report to sales management and say, here are the products that we've made available. Or if you want to meet with sales and marketing and say, here are some products that could be available. Tell us which ones look best for you. Or if you just want to report on, on uh, you know, any other characteristics or research programs in a certain market or find them by certain criteria, you can export this to spreadsheets. You can create spreadsheets from this tool. So if you want spreadsheets that are being monitored, where the data is being kept up to date, you can export directly from this tool and you can do that on your own. Now, the last piece of this directory is, of course, access to the program data itself. So let's open up a program here. 
This is the level of detail we're tracking. If you want to come in here and go straight to borrower eligibility and look at you know, ratio and FICO guidelines, you can do that. Uh, this is set up to navigate like and look like an interactive program matrix, just like we're all used to seeing. Now, Veronica, as I scroll through the details of a program here, um, talk a little bit about uh, you know, what, what this means for someone in product development to have access to this information, especially in the context of like researching and onboarding programs. Yeah, uh, one of the quick things that you can identify by just scrolling through through all of this information, if you're just trying to do a quick glance, now you have the ability to have a meaningful conversation if a loan officer or an underwriter were to reach out to you, right? Um, you're going to be able to quickly look at, um, do they fit the credit requirements uh, of customer for an underwriter? They can quickly look through that. But one of the big things for me, uh, again, when I was in product development is disclosures. Um, I can quickly identify if this is on a phone call with an LO, if it's a program, I was going to be able to say, uh, uh, maybe let me do a little bit more research and get back to you. Or unfortunately, no, because we have to become an approved lender or no, because we have to do configuration for disclosures or we have to come up with a way to um, provide different disclosures than what our system already has configured, you know, the trade versus pre trade situations. So there's so many things you can quickly identify by going through the information that's already gathered for you in this one tool. And so that's the DPA directory. Now that's where you manage your roster and you communicate to the rest of your team and your staff in different departments, what is available to them. So here's a sneak preview. This is our brand new tool. This is the underwriter portal. So we built this for a pretty specific use case. And this came from feedback from our, our customers, our peers, your peers in product development, credit risk, and so forth. The scenario was an underwriter gets a file on their desk, they've got a mortgage, and they've got a very specific DPA in front of them, and they have to underwrite to those DPA guidelines. Can we prevent them from having to call the product desk, um, you know, disrupt the flow of that loan app, disrupt whatever was happening with product strategy, can we get them immediately to the DPA guidelines, to the program that they need and clarify for them that it's, pro, that it's company approved? So this tool allows your underwriters to look by state if they want to drill down to a state and say, okay, let me look at all of our approved programs in California. I need to find this one that's sitting in this file in front of me. And maybe that's, uh, you know, this program here. They click on it. They are right into the details of that program. Or... What if they just, uh, they got a program name somewhere on the 1003 or the notes to the underwriter and they see, okay, I've got a, I've got first mortgage here in the city of Toledo home at last down payment assistance program. They can just start typing the program name or even a program or product ID. If you're monitoring those, or if you're, you're using those as well, they just start typing the program name. There's the program. Or, um, you know, if I, if I'm looking at the boost program, there I go, type my keyword and I go straight into the program details and the underwriter then through this portal can just get started, but they're only going to see company approved programs and they don't have to call the product desk to figure out if it's approved. It's only in here if it's approved and then they can get started. They've got all the same information and details that you would have in the directory, but they don't have to filter. They don't have to find, they don't have to wonder if it's company approved. It's all simply right there in front of them. So, that's the new underwriter portal. Uh, with that, let's just kind of recap here for a moment. So Veronica, uh, I think we've identified at least three simple solutions that can help ditch the spreadsheet and cut away some of the time on manual tasks. But just walk us quickly through these, these, these three uh, fixes or process improvement opportunities here. Yeah, um, cut down the first one, DPA research. You can leverage the centralized data set. You cut the research time from hours to minutes and you keep the loan officers selling, not having to um, take time out to do some research themselves on a program or obtain information for you or, or to complete steps that maybe are in place um, that has to be provided to the product team. It eliminates all of that and, and makes it um, a very shorter amount of time to, to come to a conclusion on that program itself. Um, 
by utilizing and leveraging our, our tools, you also uh, help, it also helps eliminate you having to take time to recreate or create new tools internally, like product guides and matrices. And um, you can instead focus on the strategy and higher priority projects that you've got going on versus the manual process of updating and, and managing a spreadsheet. Um, it also puts all of the information together quickly for loan officers and underwriters to um, maybe save loans and contribute to the revenue directly by improving the awareness of the DPA programs that already are approved um, for your company. Yeah, so guys, what we wanted to try to do today was kind of put into context the, the, and, and quantify the, the mounting time and hours spent doing things that could quite frankly easily be automated or, or we could cut down on the time by leveraging technology, leveraging the work that we do at Down Payment Resource to help you cut away some of the manual tasks, get LOs back selling, get them originating, keep underwriters underwriting, remove some of the, the, the obstacles and, and almost sort of put a wall between you and underwriting or you and, and sales, not in a bad way, like we don't want to talk to you, but in a good way, like we don't need to disrupt one another if we can put a better system in place and leverage technology that, that exists to do so. So with that, uh, we'll wrap it up here. We said we keep it to 30 minutes today. Uh, we intend to dig into this stuff more and bring more of this content to you. We hope you found this helpful. Obviously, with an hour, we could have dug in a lot more detail, talked about a lot more of those points where a DPA touches somebody in the loan manufacturer process and, and cut away at some of this time as well. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll go ahead and take any questions here. So if you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and throw that in the, the chat or the Q&A. Uh, we are happy to offer a free trial of the DPA directory. We want you to go in and, and take a look, take it for a spin. We'll open up a couple of states for you, uh, get a feel for the data, the value, the time it could save, how it can help improve various processes or eliminate the need to create certain documents internally if they can be produced or, or uh, replaced by some of these systems. And then, of course, if you have any questions, you can contact us at info at downpaymentresource.com. Uh, Veronica, thanks for your time today. Thanks for giving us some of this insight. We know you've spent years in product development and we're just scratching the surface, but I hope our audience found this helpful. And um, I don't need any parting words, Veronica, any final thoughts? Uh, no, I, thanks for letting me be a part of it because um, yes, I, I was in product development for five years and I became very passionate about it. So to utilize these tools, I was also able to utilize the DPA directory and it's a game changer. It really is. So I, I highly encourage, um, take advantage of the free trial offer that's being extended to you. Um, it will help you decide quickly if it's something <laughs> that you wanna look further into. And we do have a question here. Yeah, we, we do have a question here. Uh, Jeffrey asks, do we screen for investor eligibility or expect the lender to? Uh, so two answers to that. We've been told by any lender we've ever discussed that with that even if we did, it would be a guide or a filter, but that the lender would still have to do so anyway based on their own you know, compliance and, and credit risk policies. That said, we do not yet screen for investor eligibility. However, that is on our roadmap. Uh, we do provide contact information and links to the program providers resources in addition to the copious details that we already track and monitor. So any remaining question or, for example, if you need a copy of the deed or something and you need to look for restrictions, at least you've got the contact information for the agency right in front of you for a brand new program, for a program you hadn't looked at in a while. Um, so, Jeffrey, we're heading in that direction. Um, Let's see, Natalie asked, can we look at the closing tab again? Uh, yeah, sure, we can do that. So let's go back to the directory. And well, here you go. Here's a closing, closing tab right here. So uh, who's the closing funds provider? Well, that's probably not a good example. That's sort of a nuanced program, but um, let's go to closing here and a sec. I'm sorry. Sean, while you're pulling up a program, I, I do want to speak to this. Um, we are always incorporating more 
data that we're starting to track and identify. Um, an example is fees. We know that's an ongoing question in regards to what fees does this program allow or uh, do they have do you have to charge? That's something that um, is going to be started. Um, I know being responsible for all the state HFAs, SRP is a, an ongoing question too. And I'm starting to gather that information and we'll start um, providing that soon. Yeah, and to that point, and, and Natalie, uh, you asked about closing requirements. That's actually the topic we are actively collecting right now. So we are populating this section here with who is the closing funds provider, in whose name does the lien close the first and second if it's you know an HFA product or in whose name does the subordinate lien close if it's a community second. Um, so not sure if you had an additional question there, but we're also to add context to that also beginning to add what are the required closing documents? Is there a portal from which you can gather them? If so, is there a URL we can provide to that portal and so forth? So uh, that's the kind of stuff going in there. Um, let's see if we have any other questions here. Okay, I don't, um, here we go, let's see. So uh, Drew asks, is all of your directory data manually updated by individuals at DPR or have you been able to automate updates to ensure real-time accuracy for all guidelines? So what we're building towards is real-time updates. Uh, we're exploring the idea of uh, the program providers themselves being in our system and doing so for their programs. I will say though that there really is no real-time solution. Um, this is all going to be done by humans at some point. And so we have decided to be that team. So yes, we, we, we can and expect that we will have, you know, the program administrators, for example, in here doing this uh, perhaps soon. Uh, but that's our long-term vision for sure. Um, it's still a human, right? So, um, you know, will it ever be, will any of this ever be 100% accurate all the time? We're all humans. This is only going to be done by humans. But uh, once we get that uh, sort of hashed out and, and as we keep evolving, we're getting closer and closer to real-time accuracy for all the guidelines and adding more and more data points as well. Uh, let's see, uh, we have a question here. Do, do the closing, does does closing requirements state who is responsible for preparing the second mortgage docs? Uh, we have a, yes, it does. So who prepares the docs and who provides the docs? And then if there's a place where you can go to get them, uh, likewise, similarly for disclosures, we are tracking um, disclosure requirements and who prepares them as well and who provides them. Okay, let's see, any other questions? I don't see any, so uh, well, thank you guys. I, I hope this was useful. And, and as I said, this was sort of a pilot idea to put this webinar out there. We're going to keep digging in and quantifying some of these improvement opportunities and uh, bring more of this to you as we continue to evolve our systems as well. So uh, if you have any questions afterwards, reach out to us at info at downpaymentresource.com. Thank you for joining today and we will talk to you all soon.